So uh, this is Mr. Matt Maso, he's a huh? uh, very important guest, one of the partners of TEPTC. He's also the former president and CEO of RPAC International, an uh, international packaging brand, and also a former vice president and GM of YKK. So uh, we asked him to come down here to give you a short dialogue to, to just give you more insight into the fashion industry. So I'm going to let him talk. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. I have these people here, very varieties. Mm -hmm. You know, so age is pretty much by distance, right? So, anyway, uh, usually I never prepare speech in writing. So I just always speak in casual. So, so excuse my language sometimes. You know, throwing a few different languages. Uh, I have been, I just retired last year, my career, 54 years. Uh, so, East Coast, I lived 50, close to 50 years, working primarily in the whole packaging industry, starting YKK Zippa, and then started a private label business and packaging industries. So, retired last February, and my youngest daughter lives in California. She has been bugging me that moved to California. And then, we started getting a lot of snow this year, these days. So, well, I don't want to deal with snow anymore. I have two dogs I had to walk every day. And then big golden retriever sometimes pull. I fell off in snow and the slip on ice. He said, well, I can't keep doing this. <clears throat> I'm not getting younger. So I convinced my wife. He said, well, I think it's time we have to move better cl in the weather climate. So she agreed. So we decided to move to California, Glendale, California, last November. And, uh, but we don't want to live in the same house as my daughter, so we'd like to have a separate uh, living quarter, just so we don't have to face each other every day. So we found the house under one roof, two separate living area, and took it, took a renovation over the year. We moved just in November, and we lived in my daughter's guest house about four months. And our area in town renovation just completed last month, so we moved in our quarter. Finally, I've started living on living quarter now. <clears throat> so we started selling in California. So anyway, I'm happy I made a decision to move to a warmer, warmer climate. And uh, and Doreen asked me and I come to uh, and learn more about tough the business. You know, I've known Doreen since late A, when she was already 20 years old. She was a DM. Uh, AMC, a very successful young lady, and I was assigned uh, designated what they call packaging supply from the USA. Now, when she found now she has to buy everything from my company, she wasn't too happy. So we made an appointment all the way through from USA retail corporate office, and I flew all the way from USA, New York to Singapore. She didn't give me a time to meet. So she said, what a bitch I have to deal with. <laughs> you know? That time I was already uh, close to 50 years old. She was like early 20. He said, what is this? You know? So we have to break ice somewhat. So one of the retailers called Marvin's used to be pretty big. And one of the largest account, come, and Doreen was hungry. So senior VP happened to be in town. So. She whispered me, oh, this weekend, Doreen's birthday. So you do something to break ice. So that was all the uh, Westin, Westin Hotel. I think second floor, they had a dining area. So all the AMC people gathered together and they're having a birthday gathering. So I went to the kitchen. I asked the, the chef, make a birthday cake. And Doreen's name and happy birthday. Then I asked everybody, just start singing and bust a song. So we walked together, and uh, I gave my bust a cake in front of Doreen's. She looked at me and said, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I want to join to celebrate your birthday, and somewhat that's break ice. So after that, we started getting pretty close, and now we are very close to, not only friend, now we associate. 
So she asked me to be advisor when she started this, biz this business. And then last, probably five, six years ago, she asked me, you want to buy the share? So well, eventually, uh, when I retire, maybe I will do something, maybe I can help your business. So I started buying the share, so here I am, you know. So now I'm a part of the uh, Taft. So I'm trying to find which area I can participate. So international business and somewhat trying to come up with a new business venture to generate more, you know, income for the company. So that's, that's the reason I came here. Anyway, YKK, you know, Zipper business. Uh, I was hired to be heading up international uh, group for YKK. I was age 21. I was thrown out of Japan and I went to Frankfurt, Germany. So my boss is found on YKK, so well, let's take over your whole world. He said, how? He said, well, pick your choice. You either go USA or Europe. He said, well, I'd rather go Europe because Europe is a lot of small countries or divided. I'd rather crack one, 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 by, one by one in those countries, Europe. So I went to Frankfurt, Germany, age 21. Very young, very, very aggressive. So four years, I worked very hard. I had to sleep, and then probably we took over about 30 to 35 percent European market. So my boss said, "Well done. Now let's crack USA." So I flew back to Japan, 1969, and then early 70, I moved to New York. New York, and the New York Times reporter sometime interviewed me. So what are you going to do? He said, "Well, I want to take over this USA market within 10 years." So that was the New York Times article. Young Japanese chops came. She said he's going to take over this country 10 years. So what I did is I hired three leading competitors, sales manager of this company. And then I asked him, give me a top 10 account of your company, 100. And then let's crack those top three first. And how? He said, well, let's drop our pants. That means drop the price, take over. He said, well, you know, we might, we might get caught. He said, what? Well, if we get caught, we're going we're gonna to think something else. So anyway, that worked. And we cracked, and three competitors, we took over top 10 account. So eventually, they fell. So I have done the same way in eight years, and I took over the USA market. And then, I remember 1972, Nixon put the surcharge on all imported goods 10%. So we can't be competing anymore. So we gotta do something. Then I started always thinking about, we're gonna build a plant in USA. So we're gonna build a plant. Those days, state of Missouri or Georgia was best uh, area because two youngest governors and they are they are dying to bring in the Japanese industries so I used to fly back and forth Missouri State I'm meeting a governor Missouri and Georgia uh, he was the youngest governor George Jimmy Carter was youngest governor Democrats in, in Georgia and then Christopher Bond the youngest governor and what the he was Republican governor in Missouri State so they're competing and wind up and Jimmy Carter gave me the best rate. He can invest in 50 acres, 10 years, no tax. So he said, okay, we're gonna build a plant. So we built a plant made in Georgia, and that helped and uh, expedite to take over the market. So, done very well. And 1978, it's about time and private label at the buzzword is coming up on the USA market. We are primarily dealing in garment manufacture, but among the retail I was dealing in those days, the Sears, Robot, and JCPenney, uh, Montgomery Ward, people doesn't know these days anymore, some companies already went, went out a long time ago. So, well, private label, I'd like to learn, maybe this is my future business, if I ever retire YKK. It's about time YKK corporate office asked me to come back to Japan to be head of the whole international aspect. 
He said, why should I be back in Japan? I can do the same thing in the USA. No, no, we are a Japanese company. We have to be in the USA corporate, Japan corporate office. So I don't want to do that. He said, boss, I have done enough. So can I retire YKK? Because I got something I'd like to do for future. So I flew to Japan. I spoke to my boss. He understood. I promised I never want competitors. I'm going to continue to have YKK as long as I live. He said, fine. So I left the good town. So I started putting together a private little concept. That time, I don't know if you know, the limited store with uh, Columbia, Ohio. That was the first pure private label retailers. Limited stores, Express, Structure, Victoria's Secret, Lana, Name Brian, all those group was under one limited store group. Mr. Wexner, he was a founder. He's the one actually came up private little concept for retailer. So I called him, and luckily he accepted my call. So I'd like to learn the business. So I flew to Columbia, Ohio, Columbia, Ohio. I spent half day with him, and he taught me the whole private level concept. So this is it. This is going to be future and for me, because I'm not selling the garment, but I'm going to come up with the concept to try to help the retailers. So, those days, most of the retailer was buying what's called branded merchandise. Polo, this Claiborne, Jonathan Logan, whatever. So those pr and national brand, the retail price already set. And also purchase price is set. So their margin already controlled. If they need leftover stock, they have to eat it also. So they don't make a lot of money buying a national brand. So private label means a retailer create their own brand name. So no one else has a brand. That means consumer can compare, you know, price with a different brand name or the other. So you're gonna create your own brand name and you control, you set your own selling prices. Now you're gonna do sourcing your own. So you control the purchasing, I mean, the cost of the garment. So that means you're gonna control your own destinies. Now, letting someone else control your destiny. Now, you control your own destiny. So I put me writing uh, direct mailers. I sent to the whole corporate executive, top management. He said, I want to have a private uh, presentation. And then this is going to just help you to not only survive, grow very profitable your business. Surprisingly, I would say 90% USA retailer top management reply and they want to see me for private presentations. In a way I was lucky, maybe because I'm a Japanese name, they thought maybe something different, you know. So I had a private presentation starting Carter Holy Hill, Associate Dry Good, Barris Retail Group, Federal Department Store, Ally, all this, you name it, Hudson, Target, all those big shots, I met private presentation. And first one or two meeting, everybody loved the concept. Matt, let's do it. I want you to handle our business. So I used to create a brand name also. Branding, and then I gotta come up with the packaging to enhance the product. That means label, tag, boxes, body bag, whatever. <clears throat> Anything has the brand name, that's gonna really enhance their brand image and also protect corporate integrities. So they love that concept. So that took off very quick. So I would say six to seven months, I pretty much wrapped up the whole US retailers and then become the sole supplier, sole brand creators. Now sourcing overseas, we have to supply those packaging because we guarantee the consistency and the quality in the image no matter what country you produce. So. I have to have those production point, all the major sourcing countries, starting with China, those in Singapore was very big also. So at the beginning, Asian society, they could not produce a quality label or tag, you know, to support my concept. So I used to fly everything from USA to distribution center in Lai Kok, Hong Kong. We had a huge distribution center. And we had exclusive packaging supply. So, first thing I did, I bought 25 fast machines, about 30 order taker, and 50 pickers 
from the warehouse and the fuel supervisor and they keep replenishing and by shipping by air all the time. So that becomes a very big business and no one compete. So I, I set the price, but I pretty much dictate the prices. And those days, Limited Store had the two biggest agents, Limited and the Lion, Lion Phone and the Mass Industries. Uh, Lion Phone started Lion Phone Express, that the company used to name. And those a two agents and they're handling exclusive Limited Store program. So I used to dictate them, this is the price you have to pay. This is the process. So I used to control all those sourcing agents, you know, which is pretty good, including AMC, William Connor, all those sourcing agents. So that so it went very well. And then about three, four years time, so Chinese industry started just coming up and then their quality started matching up to expectation. So I started finding a local partner in a qualified supply chain in countries. So I made them partner, manufacturing partner. We are the selling we are the sales company. So they produce and we have total quality control, and they ship. So that's how we build up a business. So that's how I build up this industry, and that become the multi-billion dollar industries. So I'm pretty happy at what I created. Uh, I helped many companies to grow big. So my lifetime story in my life is, I know how to make other people very rich, you know? <laughs> that's a, I'm very good for that. Uh, so. I think that's about my story. And then uh, one thing to be successful, and in any industries, uh, be creative. That's number one. And also be charming. A charming nature is very important. We have to connect the people's mind to mind. One thing I'm very good. I make a friend, no matter what country I go. So we got a 42 countries operation that build up. So. I have a lot of friends all over the world, you know. Last April, I had a 50th wedding anniversary with my wife. I threw the party in New York and Japan, in the same hotel I married 50 years ago, and then Hong Kong. In Japan, I have a friend all over the world that came to celebrate my uh, 50th anniversary. That was very nice, very nice. You know, that's very rewarding. So I think that's a result of the being creative, and being charming, you know, have the very, very charming nature. It's very important, you know, and then uh, open mind, so people don't hesitate to approach you, you know, with always open door, uh, willing to listen, you know. And uh, one thing I had a philosophy all my life, that was my KK philosophy is cycle of goodness. That means when you do good for other people, good things come back to me. That's a philosophy I kept all my life, you know. So I'd rather get screwed than screwing somebody else's, you know. I hate to screw people, but sometimes I get screwed by someone else. Well, you know, it's a life. I don't hold a grudge, you know, and a stay friend. So that's why I did it. That's why I have, a, I have no enemy right now, honestly speaking, you know. So everybody friend. All competitor is actually all my youngest sons. So I feel like a, competing among uh, competitors is like competing my, own, and competing my own student, you know? That's what I feel. So in a way, it's competing but helping at the same time while I'm doing that, you know? So, but anyway, I'd like to do something for this TAFTA uh, because uh, I'm not really familiar with the textile fashion training. You know, come to do it, I don't know. I know the packaging inside out, uh, but I know the, uh, how to setting up company in countries, which I have done all my life. So creating joint venture is a piece of cake for me, and uh, Doreen is sort of struggling in creating joint venture. He says, well, I can help those areas. So that's pretty much, I can say, you know. Uh, but I'm happy, and I think I lived well. I never become a millionaire, but I'm not starving. Me and my wife, very, very healthy. You know, we enjoy our life. We have three children and six grandchildren. We are, we are very close, you know, we're a happy family. So I think I've done well, you know. So uh, 
Anyway, uh, I'm happy to share my lifetime story. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to take this chance to ask any questions regarding the Difficult, industry? Huh? The different industries. Yeah. Anything at all? In the whole uh, career path, right, would you share something that perhaps that was not so positive? Because in our life, sometimes at work we'll meet with difficulties. Maybe we can share with us uh, some of your experiences and how do you deal with it? Okay. Well, be positive is again, is a, a, it's a nature, it's very important nature to be successful. Always think positive. It's always failure in a lifetime, you know. Always sometimes very negative things happen. People sometimes do very negatively. But we always think the positive way, you know. And we don't, in that, just back up, step back a little bit, think about it, and come back to way to go around to become more positive approach, you know. So be positive is another important thing. Not only charming, you know, be positive. So don't be negative, don't be negative. You know, life can be always do a lot better than you expected. You can create your own life, you know. Again, many cases of life control, everything is your control by life, but not so. We control life. We create a life, our own, you know. They won't give you a life. So it's really up to you how to build up your own successful career, or successful life, or happy life. It's really up to you, you know. Don't be negative. And, and, and be positive, it's very, very important, you know. I had up and down a few times, of course, you know. Not always, you know. It's long life, 54 years career, long career, career you know. So, uh, but luckily, I always come, come back solution and come out those stage relatively quick. I don't want to hang around, you know, low bottom all the time. I'd rather be, you know, under sun, sunshine, you know. So I think it's, it's really up to you how, how you deal with yourself, you know. It's always very important. Uh, again, I am a martial artist myself. Uh, I do teach fencing, Japanese fencing. And I have my own school, I teach and love, beat the hell out of big American boys, you know. Uh, but that's, I get probably help. Discipline is a build up, a build martial art. I'm very strong minded also. And I focus, and, and the fancy we call, I read the mind, I hit right in between the eyes. So negotiation skill helped. When I'm talking to the people negotiating, I know the timing when I hit it and I close the deal. You know, that's a discipline. And also how to read opponent mind. I, you can look to eye to eye. You never avoid eye. When you talk to people, you look up in your eye, you know, that's what we go there. So you can pretty much read what you're thinking about. So at the different martial art skill helped my life also, you know. But a strong will is you can build up your own. Doesn't have to be martial art, you know. Anything. Meditation, in one way, you know. Sometimes you walk in the morning, keep a blind minded, and focus something. It's a lot of different way, you know. So it's be creative, you know. So you gotta find a way to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.